questions and we can get answers from the subconscious mind using muscle testing. You just did this basically with the sway test. Let me show you how this works. I need a volunteer to come up. Okay, come on up. Okay, you ready? And it's Teresa? Yes. All right, wonderful. Okay, this is Teresa. Say hello to Teresa, everybody. Okay, Teresa, you ready? Yes. Here we go. Hold your arm straight out like so, and I'm going to press down on your arm for a moment, and, and we'll have you make a statement, okay? Okay. Um, say, my name is Teresa. My name is Teresa. Okay, I'm going to press down on Teresa's arm. She's nice and strong. There you see that. Say, my name is Bob. My name is Bob. She says her name is Bob, and her arm weakens, you see? Because is her name Bob? No. And does her subconscious mind know that? It absolutely knows that, okay? It knows a lot of things. What's today? Friday, right? Watch this. Say, today is Friday. Today is Friday. Her computer system checks its little iCal, and it says, yeah, that's right. Today is Friday. She's strong. Watch this. Today is Sunday. Say that. Today is Sunday. What happens? <laughs> computer system says, no, that's not, uh, no, that's, that's wrong. Okay. Uh, watch this. Certain words have either positive or negative connotations as well. Say, yes. Yes. When she says, yes, that's a congruent positive thing. She's strong. Say, no. 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 She says, no. Down she goes. Interesting, huh? Okay, what I'd like you to do, first of all here, is take a moment, just use the person, whoever's sitting closest to you, and go ahead and actually just do this little exercise. Have them say, my name is Teresa. My name is Teresa. Well, don't have them say, my name is Teresa. <laughs> have them say their name is whatever their name is, and then their name is something else. My name is Bob. Say that. My name is Bob. There you go. And you see how that works. <laughs> if you have shoulder problems, okay, you might want to use the other shoulder, okay? Be careful. And don't push too hard on anybody. We're going to cover in detail tonight how to do it correctly, but I just want to give you this little glimpse. Thank you. I'd like to point something out to you. Notice how the subconscious mind here, like the iceberg, is immersed in the ocean or the water. Now, what do you think that represents? That represents something as well. Our subconscious minds, are, in a way, I believe, are immersed and are connected up with what you might call universal intelligence. Okay? Universal intelligence. How does that work? Well, there's all kinds of information all around us. You see, we're like fish swimming in a sea of information. There's information coming out of every person's body that is radiating out, filling the immensity of space immediately. I got news for you, okay? You probably thought that those thoughts that you're thinking, you know, or that you thought in your head, that those stay in your head and that those are just your thoughts and they're private. I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to burst your bubble. But those thoughts, I believe, immediately radiate out, fill the immensity of space, okay? I think that's how God knows what we're thinking, okay? I think that's how that works. But you'll see more about how this works later. Actually, let, let me show you something right now. I need somebody to volunteer and come up for a minute. Say hi to Risa, everybody. Okay, you ready, Risa? I'm going to have you face this way, all right? I want you to close your eyes, okay? Now, we're going to do a little experiment here. I'm going to do a little muscle testing on Risa, okay? Just for now, just relax. When I hold my hand like this behind her back, can you all see my hand okay? When I hold my hand like this, I want you to focus positive thoughts on Risa. You can just think, I love you. Just send love to her. I love you, Risa. Okay. Now when I do this, can you see that? I want you to send just the opposite. We don't like you. Just try that. Don't do anything mean, but you know. <laughs> Those two opposites, okay? And we'll see if there's a change that takes place here. Here we go. Say, my name is Risa. My name is Risa. Okay, and I'm gonna just test her. She's nice and strong. My name is Bob. My name is Bob. Okay, and good. So she's testable there. You see the change that takes place? This is called getting a baseline. Sometimes people are difficult to test or not testable temporarily. We're gonna cover that more in detail in the course. But right now, I want you to just close your eyes. Okay, here we go. Okay, just resist me now. You ready? Hold your arm right there. Okay, it's nice and strong. Try it again, ready? Just resist me now. Good. Okay, that's nice and strong, okay? And let's try it again, ready? Just resist, okay? And just, just keep resisting, ready? Hold it. 
Yeah, good. Just resist now. Okay. Keep trying there. Just resist. Okay. Um, do you feel do you feel it's getting harder to test? Mm -hmm. Okay. Keep your eyes closed. Oh. Okay. Okay. Just resist now. That's nice and strong. Try it again. Ready? Just resist now. Ooh. Let's go back to this. Resist now. Good. Okay. Thank you. Give her a big hand. So, how does that work? Do your thoughts have an effect on, on other people, do you think? Have you ever noticed if you're sitting in, a, in some kind of a boring meeting and you're just kind of fixated on the back of the head of some person a few rows up, what happens? Yeah, it doesn't take long either. Maybe 20, 30 seconds, maybe a minute, but if you keep focusing on them, they'll whirl around and look right where? Right exactly at you. If you've ne Raise your hand if you've tried this. Raise your hand if you actually do this on a regular basis. And quite a few of you. This is an interesting, interesting group. <laughs> yeah, it, it really does work. It's interesting. So luckily, the information about trapped emotions is all in the subconscious mind. It's not in the conscious mind, OK? That's not where it is, and that's okay. Muscle testing allows us to access the information that's in the subconscious mind, and we can determine what the subconscious mind already knows. It's a beautiful thing, okay? Let me show you how this works. Raise your hand. Now, on a scale of zero to 10, if you're at least a seven, pain-wise, 10 being you know, the most severe pain you can have, if you're at least a seven, raise your hand on a zero to 10 <laughs> scale. Anybody? Okay, do you want to come up? Okay. Okay. And what's your name? The fabulous Judy Smith. <laughs> Say hi to the fabulous Judy Smith, everybody. Hi. <laughs> I love that. Okay. You ready? Mm -hmm. let's, let's get a baseline first on Judy. Go ahead and say, my name is Judy. My name is Judy. She's nice and strong there. My name is Bob. My name is Bob. She says her name is Bob. Good. She's testable. No problem. We just determined that. And remember, that's called a baseline test. You always want to do that before you start working on somebody, because otherwise you don't know if they're testable or not, right? So where are you hurting? From about neck to toe. Neck to toe. Mm -hmm. OK, all right. And you're, what, a seven, eight, nine? I'm about an eight. About an eight. Mm -hmm. how, how long has this been going on? Quite a while. Can you all hear her? Quite Not really. You know what? Here. Let's, okay. let's put this right here and then okay. you can talk into that. Go ahead and say that again. I said for quite a while I oh. had this pain. Oh, I still can't hear you. you. Put your lips about a half inch away. So I've been feeling this pain for quite a while. I don't think it's oh. I've been feeling this pain for quite a while. <laughs> I don't need the microphone. <laughs> That's okay. You got it anyway. For a number of years, would you say? Yes. OK, all right. But more so lately. OK. So. Have you tried different things to take care of this? Oh, yes. A lot of things. A lot of things. OK. Well, you see, in all the time that I was in practice, what I found was, as time went on, I found that trapped emotions were more and more uh, the cause of everything, of all kinds of pain and discomfort. When I wrote the book, I figured trapped emotions were probably the cause of about half the pain we have. Now I think it's closer to probably about 90%. <laughs> okay? So here's what we can do. Do you think that Judy's subconscious mind, if it's really been tracking everything that's been going on in her life since day one, do you think that it knows why she has pain? Yes. It absolutely knows in detail. Now there may be more than one reason, okay? There may be several, but it knows in absolute perfect detail exactly what she needs and exactly why she's got pain. So let's do this. Let's ask. You ready? Um, we'll simply ask the subconscious mind if there's a trapped emotion. So is there a trapped emotion that has anything to do with this pain level that you're having, the, the pain that you're in? What does your body say? That's a yes, remember? Say, today's Friday. Today's Friday. Her computer says yes. Is there a trapped emotion that is, uh, having to, that is helping to create your pain? And what does your body say? Yes. It says yes, right? So here's what we need. Um, we have a list in the book, okay? Um, 
If you go back a few pages, there's a list in there of, of emotions, okay? Now, here's the neat thing about this, okay? Her subconscious mind knows exactly what emotion this is that's, that's bothering her. Now, she may have more than one, but let's find out what it is, okay? Watch. And she, yes? Do they? No, the question is, do people have to see this chart? And the answer is no. no. Why? Because the subconscious mind is tuned into universal intelligence. So it already knows what's on the chart. You know, however it works, I don't know. I think it just knows already. It just knows, which reminds me of a joke that I'll tell you later. Okay. All right, here we go. Are you ready? Okay, this trapped emotion, is it in the chart in column A? Is it in column A? And her body says yes. Is it in column B? And her body says no. So is it in one of the odd rows in column A? And her body says yes. Notice how many, we've already eliminated what, 45 emotions? Right? So, okay. So is it in one of the odd rows then? Is it in row one? No. So we're in column A. I'm sorry, I probably went through that too fast. Let's do that one more time. Sorry, I, I get on a roll and you know. Notice that we've divided this chart into two columns and six rows, right? Mm -hmm. Why have we done that? To make it fast for you to find the emotion, see? You can't do it any faster, I don't think. There's 60 emotions on here. First of all, we're gonna eliminate one of the rows, or I'm sorry, one of the columns. So we'll ask, is this emotion listed in column A on the chart? Her body says yes. Is, so we could also ask, is this emotion listed in column B on the chart? And what does her body say? It says, no, it's definitely in column A. So we just threw out 30 emotions, right? Column B, we just got rid of those. We're down to 30. So now you'll notice we've got uh, row one, two, three, four, five, and six. Well, the easiest way to do that is to just ask about odds or evens. So is this emotion in one of the odd rows then in column A? And what does her body say? It says yes. To check ourselves, we could ask, is this emotion in one of the even rows in column A? And what does her body say? It says, no, no, it's in one of the odd rows in column A. Is it in row one, column A, what's your body say? No. So the next thing we would ask is, what? Is it in row three in column A? And what do we get? Yeah. Strong, that's the body. So now we've narrowed it down to five emotions, just that quickly, right? So let's take a look here and see. So is this emotion crying? Is that what this is? Uh-uh. Okay, is the emotion discouragement? Is that what it is? That's very strong. Is the emotion rejection? No. So it's discouragement, actually. Now, this could have occurred at any time in her life, all right? It could have been inherited, maybe. She could have gotten it in the womb from her mother or somebody else. But it, what we know is that at some point, she felt this emotion strongly enough that it got trapped or stuck in her body, okay? We'll go into more detail a little later about exactly how this works. But first of all, does that ring any kind of a bell for you? Yes. It does. Are you thinking of a certain event or a certain circumstance? Um, I just remember growing up as a child, discouragement occurred a lot because we traveled a lot. I was an army brat. And okay. so we would start things and have to end them. So it was pretty discouraging. You never had roots planted. Okay. Could it be about that? It could. We don't really know. But let me tell you something. The subconscious mind, see, it knows exactly what this is about. And what we need to determine is, what the subconscious mind already knows. So we simply ask questions. And my favorite question to ask the body is, do we need to know more about this? Do we need to know more about this emotion? What does your body say? It says yes. Yeah. So in other words, there's something else that needs to be brought to consciousness. You see, there's something else about this we need to know. So let's see what it would be. First of all, what I like to do is find out when it occurred. Okay, that's the easiest thing. So how old are you right now? 56. She's 56. We'll divide her life roughly in half, kind of like dividing the list of emotions into columns, right? Same kind of thing. So uh, did this occur earlier than age, say, 30? Did it occur earlier than 30? Her body says what? Yes. Yes, earlier than 30. Did it occur earlier than 20? Yes. Did it occur earlier than 10? Wow. Earlier than 10 years old. Did this occur earlier than 5 years old? What are we getting? Do you see that? Yes. Did it occur earlier than, uh, than birth? Did it occur earlier than birth? What does your body say? It's gone, this one's gone way back, see, way back, prior to birth. So let's ask, did you get this in the womb uh, by any chance? She did get it in the womb. So did you get this from your mother in the womb? What do we get? Her body says yes. 
So you can see why the body would want us, why the subconscious would want us to know this, right? Because it's not what she was thinking. It wasn't being an army brat moving around, it was in the womb, see? Now, usually we call this a prenatal emotion. And so let's ask, uh, did this occur in the first trimester? Nope. Did you get this in the second trimester? Did you get it in the third trimester? Yes. So she picked this up in the third trimester from who? From her mother. And how does this work? Well, her mother was feeling an intense emotion of discouragement at some point. Now, Judy was in there in the womb, and she was feeling it too. Whoa, what's going on? Boom, and it's stuck in her body, see? So let's ask, now, do you think we need to know more about this? What do you think the body's gonna say now? Probably no, let's find out. Do we need to know more about this emotion? Her body says no. So now at this point, we can go ahead and release it, right? Ah, okay, face that way. Now you can use any kind of a magnet to release emotions. I like the Niken magnets. We, uh, we were using these when we figured out all of this stuff, but uh, uh, this is a little mag boy. And to release an emotion like this, you just do three rolls down the back, just like that. Okay? Question? Do you ever have, is there ever occasion when you have to do more than three? If you believe, Grasshopper, that you need to do more than three, you will. <laughs> if it's inherited, we do ten. So you'll either do three or ten. Okay, you can do more. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to do more. Feels good, right? Yes. Yeah. No problem. Sure. Doesn't hurt anything. I always, I often lose track, but um, that's okay. All right. Now, let's come back now and check and see how we did. Do we release that emotion, that trapped emotion? Yes, we did. Okay. So since we've released that, how did we find that? Do you remember? What was the first question we asked her? Is there a trapped emotion that's creating or contributing to any of your pain or discomfort? Okay, so now what I want you to do is just, just walk okay, for a minute. We'll kind of let things settle in a little bit as she's walking. Okay, that's far enough. Come on back. Now what I want you to notice okay, is how, how your pain level is now compared to how it was before. Now it was, how, it was like a, what before? An eight, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, how does it feel now compared to how it felt before? Well, it actually feels a lot less. I um, don't feel like I need to go take a Motrin right now. Okay, that's good. That's good. See, the Motrin people, they don't like me. <laughs> because, you know, there's no money in this, right? That's right. So. No, I, I feel more, um, I feel energy flowing. Okay. So on a scale of zero to 10, you're an eight. Where do you think you're at now? What do you think? Probably a, between a four and a five. Between a four and a five. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were running a drug company and you came up with a drug that would work that fast to take somebody from an eight to a four to a five, you'd be pretty excited, wouldn't you? 